Hi on FPI, brought to you by DigiKey every single week. DigiKey and Adafruit bring you the new product introductions this week. Since Siri on Lady Ada, what is the new product introduction of the week this week? All right, I'm excited. I want to do this, but I wanted to wait till it was in stock so you guys can actually buy it. This week, we're covering the Sensirion Sen 66, um, the latest, the latest, latest, and elitist. It's latest too. In, in sleek, all-in-one sensors, the Sen 66 um, kind of follows up on the Sen 55 series, which we covered actually a couple of years ago in INMPI. This time, not only does it do particulate matter, which is our PM, RH, relative humidity, and temperature, VOC, volatile organic compounds. It also does um, NOx, which I guess is like nitric gases, um, CO2, which you know, um, carbon dioxide sensing is very popular for uh, measuring airflow, and uh, HCHO, which is um, formaldehyde sensing. Now, the SEN66 actually doesn't have formaldehyde. It has only other ones. And um, what's ni nice is that it's just kind of all in one sensor. It's really easy to use. It's got I squared C and it's a great price. I mean, if you added all the cost of all these sensors together, it would be like, you know, definitely 50% more than the cost of just this one sensor. So I mentioned, we talked about the SEN55. So what, what the SEN66 builds on is it now um, it has all the sensors that the SEN54 has and it adds carbon. I think I was running like, 10 miles a day. I was like a whip it. Yeah, like you were skinny. It was so fast. Well, this is, yeah, 20, 2022. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't uh, knocked up yet either. Okay. Um, so this is the um, SCD30. There's also the SCD4 series, and that's actually the sensor that's in this. It's not NDIR, but it's this photoacoustic sensor, but it's still a very good CO2 sensor. But CO2 sensors are usually like 20 or 30 bucks. And so what's nice is that this has that built in, but it isn't doesn't add like the full thirty dollar price, and it has also, like I said, um, the volatile organic compounds, the uh, nitric gas, um, particulate matter, temperature, humidity, et cetera, et cetera. A couple different variants um, depending on the price. If you don't want to spend too much, get this particulate matter sensor, the Sen sixty. There's more and more and more. Right now, I think the only ones that are available in the Sen65 and the Sen66, the 68, which adds formaldehyde, isn't out yet. But the Sen66, like I said, is available right now. You can pick it up. Um, all in one sensing. And, you know, if you want more info, I think that they have info on these on the Sensorian site, but they're not available for purchase yet. So maybe when they are, we'll, we'll chat about them. Yeah. Okay. So the CO2 sensor, um, you know, having been used to the SCD40, um, it's good for, it's basically a 400 to 5,000 PPM typical accuracy. It can go a little bit higher, but it's basically meant for indoor sensing. Now the outdoor CO2 is 400. It's crawling up a little bit, but it's, it's about 400 ish. And you do have to expose the sensor to, um, outdoor air once a week for it to self calibrate. Otherwise it can drift a little bit. Um, it's not a bad idea. You should probably like open the window once in a while anyways, but just something, you know, if you're, if you're looking to measure something that's high CO2 and you are not expecting to have it go outside, um, you might have to do some like manual calibration. Um, the front of the tide center is also kind of interesting. Cause again, this is like a new sensor. Um, I looked it up and this is like the S F 48 or something, I think is the name of it. It's an, it's in the text. It's a sensor that um, Centurion made. Again, also quite expensive. So it's like having it built into the Sen68 saves you money and integration costs. What's nice is that this is much more compact than the Sen54. It's like definitely sleeker. I'll, sh I'll show it on the overhead. And it uses the same cable, the JSTGH six pin cable. However, what I'll mention is watch out because um, the cable is the same, but the pinout is different. Um, Specifically, the thing to watch out for is the previous version has supply voltage of five volts, and this one has a supply voltage of 3.3 .3 volts. So you can't just plug it into um, something designed for the Sen5 series because you'll accidentally put five volts into the VDD, and you don't want to do that because the maximum is 3.6 volts. So um, just be aware it's it's like it's a pin compatible, but it's not voltage compatible. Also. This sensor doesn't have a UR interface, whereas the Sen5 series does. This one only has I squared C. Um, this is the cable. 
You can get it on DigiKey. You know, they have generic JCGHs, 1.25 millimeter pitch. Our cable has like the right colors or whatever. Um, we're also working on an adapter. Our existing Sen 5 series adapter won't work because like I mentioned, the voltages are slightly different. What's nice though, is that while you have it, once you have it set up, um, you only have to talk to one address. Like you, you, it has like seven sensors in it, but there's a micro tool in the middle that kind of deals with the commands and, and rewards them and kind of connects all the sub sensors for you. So, um, you know, you have a CRC. So if there's like a loose cable, the actual commands are like, as you, as you see, quite compact, there's only like eight commands for each sensor, which is like start continuous, stop, get data, read measured, get the name, get some offset if you want to set offsets, um, get the serial number and and like maybe clear status. So there's not that many commands you need to do. So you, you can write these um, by hand if you wanted to write a driver. Yeah. And what I like is that when you read the values, you kind of get everything all at once. Like you say, like, give me the measurements. It gives you all the measurements so that um, with CRCs after each one, so you get like one kind of like time stamped measurement. Um, also good if you want to put it into low power mode. If you don't know how to drive her, um, on GitHub, on Sincerian's GitHub, they have posted I squared C drivers for Python, Pi, embedded, you know, C, whatever. So it's like no matter what platform, you know, if you're using Arduino or Raspberry Pi, um, it's very easy to do it in C. If you're using Python on a single board computer, you can use Python. Um, and if you're you know, doing a generic like MSP430, there's the embedded version. You can just, I think you probably just have to define like delay and um, I squared C write and read and, and the rest of it just works. And uh, like I mentioned, these are in stock, which is why I'm yeah, highlighting it. We like that. 44 bucks is a really good deal for all that stuff. Like I said, a, a carbon dioxide sensor usually is like 30 bucks off the bat. A PM 2.5 sensor is another like 10 bucks like a good one, temperature, humidity, and a couple of, like you add it up, okay. this is, you get everything. Volatile organic compound, you know, that those are also like another five, $6. Um, so especially with carbon dioxide, it's a good deal. Couple questions before we end the INPI segment. Uh, would the sensor work in a dirty, greasy environment, like a kitchen? Um, you would always want to have a filter in okay. front of it to get the, you don't want sticky stuff getting in. So it's not for, I think a greasy environment, you need to, specific kind of sensor that can handle that. And I don't know of any. All right. It's a good uh, tough situation. Sensors for carbon monoxide? Um, carbon monoxide sensors are different. You can get them, but they're not the same as carbon dioxide sensors. They use a different chemical process and they're they're not inexpensive. They usually need to be calibrated. Okay. No. That is I on NPI. Okay. Oh wait, let's go look at the overhead real fast. I can I can just show it Ooh. so you can see it. So this is, it's like you said, it's very sleek. It's very compact and sleek. I like it. There's a little filter here, I think. It's cool. Um, for the gas sensor, and this is the fan for the particulate matter oh. sensor. And then, you know, this is the adapter we made over ISQ14. It worked great. It worked, I got it working in like five minutes. It was super fast. So very I feel cute. like with uh, all the things that you could do with data now, data crunching, a lot of these projects are going to be a lot easier too because the hardware is straightforward. This Sometimes is, the software is harder. This, I, When I started in college, a project like this would be like $1,000 and it would take you like six months. Now you can just buy it off the shelf, ready to go, plug it in and just immediately get data. It's amazing. That's I on MPI. I on MPI.